Hey everybody, it's Leadership Development Coach Kathy Archer coming to you live again and I realized as I signed on today that I forgot to put the little post in Facebook to let you make some questions or post some questions ahead of time. So if you're coming in and you're joining me, please feel free to post some questions below. I'll check and see if they are uh, there as I go through my talk today. But I wanted to talk to you about competence. We struggle as leaders. We are challenged at times to feel more competent, confident. Uh, we worry that we're not appearing credible at times. And so what I want to sort of share with you is how you can increase that feeling of competence. But I want to draw attention to a blog that I wrote this week that kind of makes the connection between those things. I think we use the words interchangeably and sometimes inaccurately when we're describing kind of what's going on for us. And when we break it apart, it's easier to figure out where the challenges are and then what we need to do to fix those. So let me walk you through. The, the first level is that competence. And competence is, can I do it? Do I actually have the skills or the talent or the knowledge? Once you have those skills, talents, knowledge, that ability... The next step is to have the confidence to actually do it. And confidence is getting over that, oh, I don't know if I'm going to do it right, or I'm scared, or I'm worried, or, you know, I, I've, I've never actually done it before, even though I've read the book, taken the training, watched the video. I still don't know how, necessarily. So you need that courage to take that next step. And here's the thing. It's not till you have the competence, the courage to try it and do it, maybe even several times, before you feel the level of confidence. And that's where sometimes we get mixed up. We're looking for confidence and waiting till we feel confident before we do something. You know, I'm not gonna apply in the job till I feel confident. I, I'm not confident to step out and take on that new role, have that conversation, take on that task. I'll just wait. You can be waiting a long time because if you don't do some things to change, you're not gonna increase the competence, your ability, your knowledge, your skills to have the conf or the courage to try, to be brave, to be bold, to be daring, to step out and do it, even if it still feels awkward and weird, until you stick with it for a while, that's when you're gonna develop that level of confidence. So I thought today we'd take sort of three examples where we can break this down and look at what is it that I'm struggling with and how can increasing my competence help me? So one of the first ways I made a note of I did a webinar this week and, and it was on confidence and, and a number of the people in the webinar said, I, I'm i struggling. I either lost my job or I'm looking for a new job and it's that searching for sort of a job. So when you step back and think about, you know, what are the competencies that I need to have to apply for a new job, that, that breaks it down to what are the skills I need to have? What's the knowledge I need to have? And you probably already have it. I mean, you wouldn't be th even considering applying for a job if you didn't have some of it. So take a step and look at what is the job I'm applying for? What are the skills, the talents, the knowledge, the, the stuff that I need for that position? Make a note of what you already have. And before you go into that interview, brush up on those things. You know, Check into first, who's the organization that you are doing an interview with? What is their way of talking about these things? You probably talk about the same things, but they might have a different kind of lingo or a different um, procedure for doing it. Get a sense of who the organization is that you're interviewing with. That's that knowledge piece. That's going to make you feel more competent when you're in that interview with them. Go back to your notes. If you're applying on a position that, you know, you're going to have to come back to your sort of basic training, go back and review your theories. Go back through some of those skills. When you just kind of brush up on that language again, you're not stumbling through your answering your questions. And then the third thing to do is practice. Find somebody to interview with. For many of us, we're in positions for a long time. It's not that we do interviews on a regular basis. So if you step back and do some practice, you'll start to brush up on those interview skills. You know, practice, write it out. Well, you know some of the typical questions you're going to be asked. Those questions, write out some answers to. Talk them out. Say them. Practice getting those words out and in the way that feels comfortable to you. That's going to help you feel more confident, competent when you're walking into an interview. 
Another example that people often say is, I just struggle with social situations. You know, that networking in between, uh, you know, you're at a conference and it's break time and you have to have a talk or you're at a meeting and you have to have a little conversation or you're, you know, you're walking into those uh, typical meetings that we have and you've got a few minutes to spare at the beginning or at the end and what do you talk about? I remember feeling very uncomfortable in those situations and I remember reading a couple books on networking and one of the things I really took away from those uh, that information was the need to kind of tuck in your back pocket a few things to talk about. Now one of the most popular things to talk about of course is the weather which yeah I think we can stretch beyond the weather but another one is politics and I for one am not a political person I don't follow politics uh, it's not my strength so I have to have a few things extra in my back pocket to pull out especially when those conversations about politics come up and for me I need to, you know, sort of keep track of, you know, what else is going on in the world? What else is happening perhaps in my community and some of the organizations I'm involved in? And just kind of keep a few tidbits in my sort of repertoire so that when I'm in those social situations and I'm feeling a little bit uncomfortable, I have something to contribute. I can put something forward. And that may be something about, you know, well, hey, at Toastmasters, we do it this way. Or my friend was talking on Facebook today about the community not supporting her fundraising efforts for her son's hockey team. You know, those are little tidbits that I can just pull into a social situation. And if the topic comes up as as uh, it does, like I say, often around um, uh, politics, you know, I can say, hey, you know, I just seen this little quick blurb about pictures of Trudeau when he was younger. I can add a little bit of humor to it. And that just makes me feel more competent in those social situations. So if you're wanting to increase that competence, feeling more like you've got the skill or ability to handle social networking situations, just keep a few tidbits of information in your back pocket to pull out when you get into those situations. Okay, the third one. Uh, advancing your career. You know, most of us are wanting to move up the ladder. We're wanting to go from sort of frontline to team leader to manager to coordinator to director eventually. Maybe it's not that we want to do it today or maybe we just want to shift from where we are to a different type of organization or a different position. And we're not feeling as competent as we'd like to. So what you need to do in these situations is, again, take that step back and look at what are the skills, the talents, the knowledge, the things I need to know or be able to do to advance to the next level. Um, and then, here's the next step, identify where you can get some of that training. And I think that we often sort of believe that it's a big scary thing. Well, I have to go back to school or I have to, you know, sign up for this big long training course. Maybe but not always. You can access a ton of new skills and abilities in a variety of ways. You can look at uh, online courses or face-to-face -face courses for sure. Webinars, great place to, to get more information. I just did a webinar for Charity Village last week and they do regular webinars and tons of topics that they have available to them and they're all free. So check out Charity Village because that's one spot. Uh, books, you can gain a ton of information. I actually heard a stat the other day, and I don't know how true it is, but I think it makes a lot of sense. If you read five books on any one topic, you are probably as smart, if not smarter, than most of the people in that area. That's it. I know some, for some people, five books feels like a lot. It's not, really. Think about using audiobooks. Audible is a great resource. You can listen to books while you're driving. You can listen to books while you're cooking supper or whatever it is that you're doing that, you know, you can multitask a little bit with. But yeah, read a book, go on YouTube, go on Google. You know, I mean, there is nothing that is not answered online right now. Just type in, how do I? And you'll get an answer, you'll get a video, you'll get something. So if you wanna, you know, increase that particular skill, think about what it is that you need. There's also lots of um, other places online where you can take training. I'm gonna give you a few. Lynda.com, L-Y-N-D-A.com, Uday, Udemy. Coursera, those are all places where you can go online and get new information. TED Talks are a fabulous place. Just type TED Talks and whatever the subject is that you want to increase your knowledge in, and I bet you'll find something. So that's advancing your career. Third one, 
Mm, conflict situations. Yeah, you know, many people struggle with this and they they avoid conflict or they handle it poorly and then beat themselves up for it or, uh, you know, they just do it but it just never feels quite right. So how do you feel more competent handling conflict? The first step is to be prepared. Know your stuff. I mean, competence is about the knowledge and the skills, the talents. So if you're going into a conversation, into a situation that you know may be a little bit dicey, may be a little bit awkward or um, conflictual, be prepared. Know your stuff ahead of time. Do your homework. Write things down. Make notes. Make lists. Make diagrams. Whatever it is you need to do. But know your stuff ahead of time. If you can, and this isn't always an option, but if you can and you know you're going <clears throat> into one of those situations and you haven't done your homework, ask for time. You know what? I know we need to have this conversation, but I need to do a little bit of research first. Can I talk to you tomorrow about it? Yeah, it might feel weird. Yeah, it might feel awkward. Um, the other person might roll their eyes at you, but gives you that opportunity to get a leg up on the situation. When you step back and kind of do your homework about that, you're much better able to do that. Um, I see. Uh, what else did I want to say about this one? Oh, and focus on what you do know. If you are in that conflict kind of situation and you know what happens when emotions get going. I mean, everything but the kitchen sink gets brought into the conversation. You know, everything that happened in the past and we're all stressed about. Try and keep it on the topic at hand, especially the stuff you know about. That's going to help you feel more competent in it. And if there's an area that you don't know about that gets brought into the conversation, simply say that. I don't have any information on that. I wasn't involved in that part of the exercise, the discussion, the situation. Uh, you know, and bring it back to this is what I know. This is the information I have. This is what I'm able to report back on. This is what I'm able to provide feedback on or information on. And keep it to there. It's when we try and fumble our way through the stuff that we don't know that we often get ourselves into trouble. So when you're in those conflict situations, know your stuff, take some time to be prepared, and try and stick to the conversations that you do know. So that's three times that we sometimes struggle with our competence. Sometimes we're struggling with building uh, our competence when we're applying on a new job or when we're advancing our career. And then the third way is around those conflict situations. Here's the three steps that you need to do to be more competent. First one is to step back and assess your skills, your abilities, your talents, right? So take a moment to go, what is it that I need to have, should have, would help me do this job better, those kinds of things. Step two, locate the resources that are going to help you fill in the gaps. You know, if this is what you need, but you only have 60 to 80 percent of it, where can you shore that up? Where can you increase those skills? And again, that comes back to some of the places that I talked about earlier. Online training, face-to-face -face training, YouTube videos, read a book, whatever it is you need to do. So first step, assess your skills. Once you've identified your gaps, locate some resources and then start doing some of that training. The third step to increasing your competence is actually a different one that sometimes we wouldn't actually think about, but it's finding yourself a mentor. Find somebody who's been through it before and kind of follow them. There's nothing that hasn't been done in this world. There's nothing that, you know, we haven't gone through anything from, you know, dating to losing money to parenting challenges to applying on a new job to you know, going to the moon for heaven's sakes. It's been done before. Somebody's already done part of the work for you. Find an online mentor, find somebody in person, find somebody that you can follow that's done some of this and find inspiration from them. They'll recommend books and videos and stuff to watch. They will uh, do things that you can learn from. Ask them questions, pick their brains if it's somebody that you have in person. But that's going to help you increase your competence. When you can see that it's already been done, when you can um, follow somebody else's steps, it helps you tremendously. So assess your skills, fill in those gaps with some resources, find yourself a mentor. So here's your homework for today. Five minute exercise. I want you to set aside five minutes of time, identify an issue where you're struggling with competence, where you're feeling a lack of competence. Two, 
list the skills that you need to feel more competent, to be more competent. And three, identify the places for you to get that. So that's it. Set aside five minutes, write down the challenge that you're having where you're feeling your lack of competence. Then make a list of the skills, training, or skills, talents, resources that you need to have and where the gaps are, and then identify where you can get that training. If you just spend that five minutes, you are already going to see your competence feel higher. And that's simply because you probably already have half of this. You just are so focused on the stuff that you don't have or so scared that you can't actually do it. Identify it and you will start to feel more competent. Do the work and you'll feel even more competent. So I'm just going to double check if there's any questions going on here. I don't see any, but just let me double check. Do, 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 do. And my phone is wiggling. Sorry about that. And my internet is slow. So I really appreciate all you guys coming on to these live videos. And I know that they are, um, you know, quick uh, little bits of information. And I talk really fast. Uh, but I hope that they're helpful for you to um, get some of that information. I'm scrolling through trying to find my live video. There it is. Um, and, you know, making sure that you're getting some of those skills to feel better, to, to sort of step forward more confidently and boldly and bravely and do some of the things that maybe you've been scared to do in the past. So I don't see any questions. If you do have any, post them after. Uh, if you're watching the replay of this, post them below and I will jump in and respond. Make sure you do your homework. Set aside five minutes. What's the challenge I'm having? What are the skills, talents that I need to have? And where can I get those? Talk to you next week.